Uh, wow, hi. Welcome to the third episode, RIP, the one that we lost due to technical difficulties. The lost episode. Of the Anti-Power Hour, Lucy and Corey's Anti-Power Hour. Yeah. Really Lucy. getting the groove of it now. Really getting in the groove. You know, the third episode uh, is really getting the groove of it. I hope we, I hope we stay in the... Maybe, th- maybe I'm speaking too soon. Third Three is not that much, actually, we, but... No, we, we can just relax and not try even more so now. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I am Lucy here in Pennsylvania. I'm Corey. I'm beginning to sweat because the air conditioning is too loud, so this will be fun. Um, and I'm in Florida, so I'm sweating already. I mean, that's what I assume about Florida. I've never been Lots there. Lots of sweat. Um, I don't believe in boycotting states, but I do say it's becoming less and less appealing thinking about visiting there, except for visiting you. My... You mean like boycotting like individual state? Like, yeah, I don't boy- do Boycotting the state. That seems Oh, that seems no. Cool. That's also a taller order, though, to be fair. I mean, boycotting the whole, like, the state. That's... That would be hard, I guess. Yeah, but parts have... of it, sure. Yeah. Well, that's the... that's There's the rub. That's the Like, I'll use the roads. Tomato. Uh, but who will build the roads? Yeah. Well, they're already built. They're outside my... Phenomenal. I'll, I'll use them. <laughs> We're getting yeah, somewhere like, already. I think people are overthinking that issue. Well, that's We're, just... we're drowning in roads. <laughs> Who will maintain them? Well, I mean, the government doesn't mm. really do that very well. Mm. Uh, over here, we had... The last few years, we had a bridge collapse. We had a bus Whoa. hilariously fall into a giant hole. Hilarious. Were there I mean, I think, the there, I think everyone was fine with the bus thing. It became a there, Were there people inside the bus? There were. Not a lot. It was fine. Were there people in the hole? In the ground? Like, <laughs> in the earth? <laughs> Only the mole people, presumably. I hope they were okay as well. Um... I hope so too. <laughs> Mole people. Yeah, the are government people. doesn't watch out for them at all. No, that's true. They don't pay their taxes though, so it's fine. Um, wow, we've covered a lot already. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Just go out on a high note, you know. Uh, oh my gosh! Is so, this a high note? Is this a high note? I don't know. We should. I mean, sadly, not literally. No, my it's because I just is low. My brain is said. sober. Terrible. There's no height going. On. Low altitude, I'm, sober I'm average brain. height. So there's no, there's yeah, it's. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing going on. <laughs> on that note, um, so I was watching before we signed on something. Uh, my dad emailed me, which was a 1967 debate between Robert Kennedy and uh, Ronald Reagan, and there were a lot of international college students yelling at them about the Vietnam War, and. It was pretty interesting to watch. Um, what year? 1967. Oof, that's interesting. I don't actually never... totally know why Reagan was there because yeah, he was I busy guess... being the governor of California at the time. And um, I haven't really watched any old presidential debates. That sounds like a fun archival sort of. Well, it's adventure. very it's it's more substantial than a presidential debate now, to be sure, but. I will say that when you let him get going, uh, both of them get really obnoxiously folksy and full of bullshit. Especially Reagan. He's very good at that. Um, But you have some pretty badass students, some of them kind of pissed off yelling about the Vietnam War. So it's it's less soundbitey. All that to say, are you ready for campaign 2024, Corey? Get psyched. (laughs) Um, I, I'm not ready. I will never be ready. Every time. I'm still I not forget... ready for the 2020 campaign. <laughs> I'm not ready for that. That's a really good point. Or the 2016. Every... <laughs> or 19... No, not 1916. Probably 1918. Or 1796. Absolutely. I'm not ready for that. No. Never. I will never get psyched. Um, I, I forget every time how it makes me queasy like obligatory status of white middle class girl not you know not as imperiled by the state as some people certainly but every time i forget how bad it feels to see all these people clawing for power and trying to decide which one is the least terrifying i mean i think we're all pretty imperiled by the state i mean especially uh to as a woman now with abortion being uh, flaring up, 
Uh, but beyond that, it's almost like this aesthetic thing, right? I feel like that's what you're, what makes you queasy too. Like almost this like aesthetic, like seeing these people and what they're like and uh, the whole, uh, you know, carnival, uh, carnival. <laughs> of it all this is, is fairly, carnival. fairly uh, lamentable. Um, and I don't, I don't really plug into it. I mean, that much, um, like years and years ago, 20, you know, 2012 era, you know, I was like, I was like, yeah, watching the debates, watching, watching the news, following the polls. Uh, but now I don't, I don't, I don't do any of that stuff. Maybe I'll watch a debate for kind of humor's sake, because you can almost laugh at them if you're in the right head space to some extent, but, um, I don't really drink yeah. so anymore, so I probably would have a real hard time watching a debate. Uh, near the end of George W. Bush's campaign, my friend, and I don't know why it never occurred to me, the um, presidential drinking game, just with sips of beer so like you don't die. But that makes it go down real smooth. I've never done that, actually. That sounds fun. A presidential <laughs> debate drinking game. It's, it's bleak, but it helps, I think. Um, yeah, well, well, bleak for sure. But, that goes without saying. So I guess my other reason for mentioning old Bobby Bobby K is that so far, this makes me so weirded out to say Robert Kennedy Jr.'s actual campaign platform, which thankfully does not mention the word vaccines anywhere, which is some good PR. He is the least horrible person so far who has claimed that he's running and that's super weird because he's both a dynasty like a dynastic political guy and he's a scientific dumbass as far as i can tell i i i am ignorant uh mostly uh regarding robert kennedy uh but i did see that he shared a lou rockwell article Oh, yeah, that's fucking Twitter, weird. Oh, no, was, oh, you, no. didn't, you didn't see that? No. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Um, and I'm not saying that, like, necessarily. That's a weird like, Venn diagram, man. It that's is. No, much. it's it's like the writers are really working overtime this season because that's a very strange and, like, not a really predictable <laughs> Crossover sort of, episode. Sort of. Yeah, it's the Infinity War of, oh. ter of terrible people. Um <laughs> That's been the last few years is that like a, a real crossover event with bad politics, I think. Yeah, yeah, all the crossovers, cookies. all the cameos, <laughs> um, like, you know. Um, yeah, no, but so, but release Robert Kennedy's platform, like it mentions, I believe, ending qualified immunity for law enforcement. And like, oh. I swear there's something about <laughs> civil asset forfeiture, like. That's pretty cool. Eighty-seven percent of it, maybe. I don't know. I forget. I haven't. It's not right. In front but who of me. knows? Sounds yeah, I mean, pretty legit. And yeah. he doesn't mention vaccines, which is a, why a lot of people like him. Which again, to me, is you know, oh, really, like the really bad stuff. Yeah, that's why yeah, he yeah, became yeah. a thing yeah. beyond being you know little Bobby yeah. Junior and stuff. Yeah. So that's weird. Little um, Bobby Junior. Well, that's nice about his uh, platform. I mean. Not sure how uh, relevant that will be, you know, after the campaign. Um, Biden's platform, if I remember correctly, was like far better than <laughs> what policies he's. Uh, I'm sure that's actually true. implemented. Um, Good old imaginary Biden, so, imaginary Obama, imaginary Biden, imaginary Obama, imaginary R R R F K. Mm -hmm. I mean, he might. I'm tempted to, to say, you know, there's no way he could win, but, we, you know, that's famous last words that, yeah. you know, demonstrated pretty recently. So who knows? Uh, but I trust your your general instincts on him, I suppose. So um, It's not really instincts. It's just more like somebody made a good sounding platform. But again, no vaccine. No, just like how are you going to get relatively the less evil? Yeah. Relatively less than the other. Oh, that's fine. You know, I mean, I don't know, though plausible to me i mean i'm not no one's you know i'm not voting for anyone perhaps no yeah, i mean neither i mean either you know, but it's interesting to just to compare to, you know to joe jorgensen may end up being the only person that i ever vote for for president um you know oh is she the only person you've ever voted for yet uh i i, I threw in some random other people i even voted for random uh keystone party people here in pennsylvania which is the offshoot of the what... libertarians because libertarians got fucking weird and right wing. Whoa. 
So I Keystone. love to waste my vote. Waste my vote. <laughs> Um, well, what made you uh, crawl out of the woodwork for Joe? Um, I think we've discussed this, and it drives me crazy that it seems like a huge percentage of the Libertarian Party paleo, let's say, paleo-conservative uh, thing that happened. So much of that is a reaction to Joe Jorgensen. And she is what I would call, she was a moderate radical, which means she was mostly pretty good and pretty freedom-based on everything. Um, and the final straw was that knowing that she was not a weird reactionary social conservative creep, but she also ran a, like, a, <laughs> of all things, a political ad about bring the troops home that combined with, you know, expressing non-social conservative sentiments. I was like, all right, plus I want to say I voted for Joe and win the, um, white feminist award because I voted for a woman. So I win at feminism. Huh. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. but say you voted for Joe out of context, also is kind mm -hmm. of misleading. Exactly, exactly. So would you vote for her again? If uh, I don't, I, I don't. I mean, I guess so. Uh, yeah. I don't really know what the Libertarian Party is going to. Uh... It's. It makes me. I mean, I was never like. I gave them money for like a year, I think. Um, but it's still gross to a see year, what's a happening year too to many. them. A year too yeah. many. <laughs> You gotta get some reparations for that. <laughs> um, okay, so a lot of people seem very confident that no one likes Ron DeSantis, so he won't be the president. But he's really, really awful. So, as a Floridian, can you or? Yeah, I mean, people people here like Ron DeSantis. Do you throw up on so. them daily? Because I was thinking you should. <laughs> Just vomit it's on big. Your like shoes. I'm a. I really enjoy like flea markets and like, you know, that kind of stuff. And, um, but unfortunately, and, and you'll see all, you know, all stripes at, at, at sort of flea markets. Um, but definitely, uh, a common, uh, flag thrown around and hung by the vendors. I remember the last few times I've gone, I mean, you got a healthy dose of Trump too, but then you healthy. also have this like, you know, or not, you know, <laughs> lethal dose of Trump and, and, and and also DeSantis. So um, I, I I don't know. If, I have no idea who who has the better chance of winning. I have no idea. I will I I will see. I mean, who is there? I used to say um, maybe in theory uh, Mike Pence was scarier than Trump because presumably he was more politically competent and he was more sincerely religious in the very bad sense. But he turns out to be such a little, like a, a little bitch that maybe he's, you know. <laughs> like, like a pushover. Yeah, I mean, it, honestly, of all the people who should be mad about January 6th, um, he's very high on the list of people who should be, like, yeah. offended. <laughs> and he bad. didn't flip on Trump after that. Um, I just. Well, no, I agree. It's the, I mean, if, you know, the issue of like a competent fascist versus an incompetent fascist or like a sincere believer versus, you know, an uh, insincere believer who kind of weaponizes that stuff. I don't know which could be worse. They're both pretty bad. I almost think that Trump is sincere in that he is a creature of pure ego and that's all he actually cares about. So sure, well, he'll, he'll change his stance on things, but the sincerity is me, 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 me. Well, I, I didn't me. mean, I, I just meant win. sincerity in the religious belief. Mm-hmm. Like Which, you had mentioned. Yeah, not but, so much with him. Uh, yeah, but fair. But, but, but yes, fair enough, I suppose. Well, it's more like delusion than sincerity. <laughs> what you just described is more... I mean, Where's the line between... <laughs> well, yeah, there's a whole religious thing we could talk about sometime, or lack thereof. Um, oh, that's actually something we could talk about later if we want to get to any kind of pop culture thing. Um, but... I don't know. I just feel like, like it's hard for me to believe that Trump could actually be reelected, but everyone keeps because saying it's, it's weird. Po possible. It could, yeah, I could see that happening. Um, unfortunately, um, I, mean, I don't know. I just don't know. It's just it just makes me feel so terrible to think about because they're so awful. And they're just going to repeat yeah. the same thing over and over again. And even if it's Trump versus Biden, that's pretty pathetic too. Like, they're it so, would be, I, they're it so almost seems old. humorous to redo that. It almost seems um, 
uh, just humorous that we would get stuck with that exact pair again. I mean, if Biden Even is... no one wants it. Like, I don't know. I, I, I can't help but still feel a little bit of relief that we don't have a president that, like, sucks all the air out of the room at all times. But he's still like lurking, you know. Trump is still lurking, you know. We have. Uh, I don't know. For a while, I thought Greg Abbott was worse than Ron DeSantis, but now I can't decide. They're both human traffickers, by the way, more than almost anyone who's actually accused of that. Yeah. <laughs> which is which is fun, you know. Um, we overstate that as a real issue, um, and then actual governors of states are actual human traffickers yeah. and we're like whatever yeah yeah well it becomes completely weaponized you know completely abstracted from, from any actual ongoings so people can just ignore it when their preferred politician is similar to like the people's i feel like uh people's uh like attitude towards like um like the epstein logs mm -hmm. like it's like i feel like most of the people i hear like who yell a lot about that and like uh, are pretty selective <laughs> with with well, they'll 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 like say nothing or, or even endorse people who appear on the logs but then but then won't stop yelling about other people who appear on the logs that is true i mean every trump person and every Clinton yeah. person um i also suddenly wonder like as far as i know some of the girls who were there were like 16 17 um so like I don't, I don't know enough about it, you know? Like, there are 16-year-olds that you could be like, oh, she's 19, so it's fine, you know, celebrity guy. Like, I don't Why? know the, the inner workings. Just a lot of um, rich creeps rubbing elbows. You know, who knows who, who was in on everything? Like, now they're saying Epstein was trying to blackmail Bill Gates for have, cheating on his wife? Oh, yeah, I, heard, I saw that. I saw that. So like, well, I I don't know too much about. I don't follow the the uh, intricate details of, of these cases. I think uh, people who do so are um, are often well meaning, but but are getting caught up in um, particulars and then like trying to draw a lot of inferences from that about like the way the world works or other things, and it feeds into a real conspiratorial view of things. And um, uh, so I, so I don't know. I think it's. I think I just think it's easy to get like kind of lost um, in the weeds of that stuff. Yeah. Um, and take the, like the like a weird moral from it. Um, I mean, they should release more stuff that they may never release, and like it's clearly shady as hell. Um, oh no! Yeah, yeah, and 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 it's just that like 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 part like particular instances of of abuse or violence or evil or you know whatever whatever negative thing you want. Um, to some people really like will inevitably look like evidence of like some broader like conspiracy or like some, or, or some broader like framework of the way the world works and so I think it's like kind of poison people into like a like a like an unwarranted kind of cynicism and despair and like also like paranoia um, mm -hmm. with like and you see and you see a worst of all in like the, like the real QAnon uh, stuff but you have but it's like a gradient you know spectrum and you see people who like it seems like they're, you know, 30% or 50% of the way to the full QAnon sort of paranoia. Um, and it's unfortunate. Yeah, QAnon I, I wish... was like a meta-analysis of conspiracy theories, you know? Like, you look at all what the other mean? conspiracy theories and you make a, a new study about how valid they are. Like, that was, that was the ultimate conspiracy. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, well, it's just, I think that's how conspiracies tend. They kind of feed into each other and... Um, you know, they, they, they kind of pile on top of each other. And then you have this like this like soup of, of like vague seemings and like vague connections that that you can like reconstruct in your mind to like paint a clear picture of the world. But in reality, you, you don't you've been lost in like a bunch of a bunch of seemings and a bunch of people trying to draw connections and, and where there aren't any. I just think there's some obvious tendencies among humans and among rich, powerful weird narcissistic humans that are bad but are not puppet masters controlling every aspect of human existence bad oh exactly like, like do you know about bohemian grove for example in california no i don't, I don't, um, I don't tell me it is i'm trying to remember where in california it's in the woods it's like a resort women are not allowed there 
Um, I don't think even as people who like work there, the oh. biggest, most powerful people in the um, United States, and I guess the world sometimes will meet there and they do weird fratty shit. Um, John oh. Ronson wrote about this and he and Alex Jones back when Alex Jones was a cult figure, as opposed to whatever he is now, they snuck in and observed the goings on and it's like weird fratty like there's like an owl statue and they like burn a thing and they call it the cremation of care and they're like we're gonna it's really what? weird it's really weird you gotta look it up like i can't but you it's also to... really weird in a fratty weirdly like childish boyish way and alex jones right. of course sincerely or not can take that as some devil worshiping shit but fratty is the only word for it. Like these are the same powerful people who are all probably in fraternities and skull and bones sure. and shit. And they're just doing the same shit in the woods. And it's yeah. bad, yeah. you know, <laughs> and yeah. it's weird and creepy, but it's not proof of, you know, devil worship or what have you. Um, <clears throat> it's weird. Cause like they're, yeah. they're, they're halfway to some truth and then they go hog wild with it. Conspiracy people. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously rich and powerful people uh, are often, terrible people and do terrible things this should not be surprising to anyone it's crazy to go too far to the other side and like try to deny this and like do endless apologetics or go through endless hoops i'm always trying to find the least terrible billionaire as a point of curiosity or the least that's that's fine yeah (laughs) but like the 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 but the the, then like you said the error goes and and then you turn it into like a satanic panic Mm -hmm. which is having kind of a nostalgic revival which is the problem when you actually believe in demons and stuff and that's a whole well yeah (laughs) if you actually believe in demons i feel like you've got some demons of your own but Mm, well uh, said said. (laughs) i I feel like whatever you whatever beliefs you put on top of like if that's the way you're operating there's like an an unbridgeable chasm between the way um you think about the world and 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 i think what is any reasonable way to think about the world yeah that's true but those people got somewhere in the 80s and 90s and stuff after all yeah and they and they are now i i just saw um uh someone talking about or like it was like a video you know a video someone took of, of, of harassing these uh these target employees about their pride shirts and 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 all as saying you know that's the, the do you support the satanic stuff do you support this it's demonic it's like yep it's like completely inseparable it's sure do ha- it's haunting and disturbing and sad that how uh this like revived satanic panic stuff is being like kind of fused and stitched together with homophobia and transphobia and it's all becoming like a singular thing <laughs> where it's like it's like that's a completely demented way of thinking about things and... yeah i mean i just saw that um Target, I guess, halfway decided to 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 wuss out, and they're like, "We're gonna have less pride stuff. We're sorry. We'll put it like in the back or whatever. Like we'll dial it down. Sorry." Um, which is horrible, obnoxious. horrible precedent, horrible precedent. I'm I'm deeply worried. Like they say pretty clearly, that's a result of of like the video I described. That like apparent repeated uh, instances of coming to harassment or their employees feeling unsafe, and it's an, uh, insane that that. It's gotten to the point where, like, this company is, is buckling to these threatening individuals. I mean, um, it's still, like, corporate pride, right? And people always have some reasonable objections to or critiques of that. But I'd say a worse thing than corporate pride is, uh, you know, backlash to it in this way. Yeah, it's corporate that's... homophobia or corporate <laughs> hate or corporate bigotry. Like, I don't – it's clearly which one's preferable – it's mm-hmm. e- it's e- it's not uh, the whole uh, uh, picture. It's very easy, I think, to like overrate progress that's been made by looking at those kind of indicators. But, right, right. But they're all they also are mild indicators of progress of 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 the kind of ideas um, and, and perspectives that are allowed um, in kind of the public sphere and kind of like uh, you know the the physical world around us and and, and the discourse. And, and if that stuff gets shoved back you know, behind closed doors because of threatening and intimidating and violent people. That's, that's a horrible loss and would probably uh, foreshadow worse things even. Yeah. I mean, I can't, like, I will see polls that claim that sort of, you know, middle America, broadly speaking, isn't quite as, you know, captivated by, oh, I saw a trans as like Matt Walsh is. And 
that type of person is drumming up obviously support for their terribleness but you know most average people still are like ah oh, the economy inflation etc and that may well be true but it still feels sometimes like the matt walsh types are winning um or they're certainly winning more than is is comfortable so like i yeah. don't know i don't know how much think- people care people who have never actually met a trans person mm-hmm. because there are still plenty of people who have never knowingly met a trans person and sorry fucking abigail schreier but the world is not the the elitist east you know coastal elites like i don't think every 12 year old gets a parade for coming out as trans just because it's you know pretty accepted in uh, certain places now like yeah <laughs> I, th- I agree with you i think people are uh most people are tend to largely be driven by more you know economic material you know kind of immediate concerns um which god knows makes more but, sense i mean <laughs> yeah but that, but of course that's not everything and things like ideology and and bigotry are also obviously very animating factors as well and kind of and and of course aren't really separable they get tied into your narrative about your material conditions as well like the, this is probably most obvious in the case of like bigotry towards immigrants because we're right. still in my jobs and they're right. great so but it, but even with other cases it's the, the connection is there um uh but unfortunately my you know minority views minority movements like uh if, if we want to say the, the anti-trans stuff is that can still make a hugely damaging impact especially if they get the reins of, the, of government we've seen that with various states so far so like that's it's even if most people are indifferent to it well that's it's kind of double short because right? indifferent to it mean they'll probably tolerate the shitty bills and stuff if right, their right. material concerns are, are you know so and this like has great historical precedent so can we make the anti-trans people into an oppressed minority <laughs> that's my new suggestion <laughs> i would like to oppress that minority i want to uh you know oppress the views uh <laughs> i don't want that for pers- i think a uh, uh, discourse and a, and, a, and a kind of a public sphere where those perspectives are are shamed and 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 behind closed doors is much is much better and for freedom and for um for individuals right that's Uh, what it i mean it always it's to me it always i always come back to the idea that everybody has a line somewhere about what's beyond the pale in a debate and i think i saw something recently about an acad like a college debate thing and how they weren't going to talk about x and there was probably we're not going to have a matt walshian debate about what is a woman blah 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 um and I don't know. I'm not going to say, like, I don't really care specifically, but you know that they weren't going to have debate about whether, you know, black people, like segregation was good. Like every type of format has, has a, has a line they don't cross. Everybody who wouldn't yell, run down the street yelling an ethnic slur, which is most people has a line. Everybody has a line. We're just trying to figure out where the line is and in what circumstances. And Right wing people in particular just pretend they have no line, and they have so many. It's so yes, stupid. The, yes, yes. There's that kind, though, in a way, a kind of like grandstanding or 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 like a like a kind of a turning of things. Like when, in fact, it's just a different line. The line is well, if you're trans or you're gay, then then you we can are we not can, allowed to express it. that publicly. Yeah. Or, or you know, we have to debate if that's if you're allowed to express that publicly. And I think. Uh, I do think it really matters what questions um, we treat as like legitimate or like open or like, you know, still to be settled. Um, and, and then at the same time, you know, once once enough people start debating that question, whether you think that's that's a good uh, development or not, it, then it also becomes difficult to not engage in those discussions to right. um, to make their perspective seem to be in the wrong um on whatever question you're asking uh, whether it's the trans question the jewish question oh my god question. but uh, but that's you are my, jewish you know, right you are jewish yeah just because yeah. the jewish question is such a terrible I, before you said that and just said the trans question i was internally cringing because any phrasing of the yeah group question is so grotesque um so yeah and i think they're similar and i think people want to say they're not you know they're not asking this question i think really a lot of it is this question you know is being trans um, uh, legitimate morally okay acceptable in public these are somehow where a good amount of people for you know uh, yes that's another one where people are this has become like a sincere topic of controversial disagreement 
and then and 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 yeah it's uh unfortunate and like it comes up in these debates sort of endlessly and it's getting really weird where people are like but the surgery and they start graphically describing you know uh a surgery and like do you know about all surgeries like <laughs> now that we've thrown out vaccines amongst you people are we now being like surgery you know that they take a sharp knife and cut your flesh during surgery can you believe it <laughs> like yeah it sounds horrible because surgery is very graphic it's very invasive that's we we all know that you know start pretending we don't know it yeah, there's a strange. Uh, that's that's a funny point that you that you make. Uh, I do see that um, a kind of <clears throat> as as if that that is what makes your position compelling, right? Like, well, let me describe in more graphic, <laughs> ever more graphic detail. Um, and and on the, and, and and there's also just a more general too equivocation uh, on the issue of surgeries. Um, um, and and you know when you look at this this focus on like the um, the amount of uh, trans people who regret. Mm-hmm. their surgeries but then you look at the number of people who regret other kinds of surgeries like the ones other, we don't care like, about like breast implants for cis women for example yeah yeah and, and and you get even higher numbers of regret and it's like i mean people are out to get surgeries people sometimes regret them this why is this now suddenly like a controversial thing or like sudden some people discovered and why are they more concerned about the trans surgeries than than the breast implants right i think we know all but, the reasons why no I'm, yeah no i was <laughs> rhetorical and, <laughs> and also because back in the day you know as far as to generalize the procedure for getting surgery is that okay i now can pass as much as possible say as a woman and i'm going to move away and start a new life and like not tell anyone that i'm trans like that was sort of what was done in a lot of cases and that's so easy for weirdos who are uncomfortable with everything to ignore if it's an anomaly if it's it's the pride is the problem i mean it really it comes back to like the pride and the openness is the problem for them you know if nobody talked about it it's not like they would be tolerant but they would be less insane if nobody talked about it if if nobody was proud and open And oh, I so agree. maybe I... we still need pride parades, you know? Maybe pride has gone corporate and stuff, but like sounds like we still need them. I don't know. No, yeah. I mean, I mean every <laughs> pride is gone corporate. I mean, uh, I don't know. Like good ideas are always eventually adopted by the broader culture and that includes like, That's a very culture. optimistic, but <laughs> I mean Oh, well no, I mean like I didn't assume, I mean I mean I mean good ideas whether good or bad like eventually catch on and get picked up. It's just strange to like you know, uh like impugn pride because Target sells pride shirts. They sell shirts of a lot of things. Like it doesn't having to do with the underlying thing. And uh, but I I agree. I think that's a good point you make about like pride itself is like what's bothering people. And you also notice the religious bent of this opposition too. Is like pride is a sin. I hear that all the time. Even from and, people like fucking Jordan Peterson who pretends not to be religious, which drives yeah. me even more insane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and I think, but I think that's I take the opposite moral, and it's like I don't. I, I don't think I think I think, you know, and in, in, without overreacting uh, in the other direction, but like pri- pride is, is a virtue for certainly for at least for some context and to some degree. Um, and I think that stuff really e- exemplifies that. And it is what bothers people. If it was hidden behind closed doors, if it was quiet, if it was if it was shameful. If our and, children, uppercase letters, didn't have to know about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you don't. If I can pretend it doesn't exist, there's a strange kind of solipsism, I guess, there that is guiding that. But we st- and we still have the exact same like. I'm always shocked how there's nothing new under the sun and how uh, how yeah. long the gays are recruiting our children thing has been going on. I mean, and people still believe it just unblinkingly. Well, they can't have children, so they have to recruit our children, like. People seem to truly believe that, I mean, the, I guess what they called back in the day, the homosexual agenda. Like, they, they believe it. Yeah. They believe it. Now, it's the trans agenda. They want to recruit. You can be an overzealous, tolerant person. You know, like, you, nobody should, like, I don't, I, I'm very skeptical that this is a really deep problem. But, you know, 
you know, don't oh, oh. assume like a kid is one way or another. Like, let them oh, yeah. tell you, tell them, <clears throat> you know, if you change your mind, like, let's talk about it. You know, just let me know. Like, this is not, nothing's getting set in stone right now. Little Jimmy, Timmy, Janie, whatever, you know, just like, that's all I ask is like, nobody push anybody except, especially a child. That's all. <laughs> oh yeah there's a strange um you know because it's is normalized then then suddenly everyone's being pressured into it that's a strange right idea. yeah weird way to think about it um and obviously when that you know apply just as much to your perspective if, if well they want that to be i mean they want you to be pressured into being a good christian a lot straight of the time. and citizen christian i guess sure yeah uh sure 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 it's it is it's just it's it's hard to convey how depressed like because because we kind of thought we got past this I think in the mid 2010s after uh, gay marriage was legalized in the United States in 2012 and like it just felt like that stuff was totally like not stopped being centered in political debates and, yeah for like a um, minute and there. like a bunch of the Democrats were like um like a like you know t changing their tune obviously on pretending like, they marriage, were tolerant the whole yeah, time yeah pretending they were <laughs> always held that view yeah um and then it's sort of like making this like triumphant return and i don't really know uh, like how, it's just so hard to convey how depressing it is um to see it kind of coming back and i and i don't know if i have a good explanation for why um but i i do strongly hope it's kind of a you know, a uh uh like we said earlier not just a minority but like a kind of you know desperate you know uh final cry before culture finally just moves the fuck on before they die and and ideas. yeah well yes that's a huge part of it the vast majority i think are older people and but uh, so. that's perhaps not always accurate and, and it seems like perhaps a lot of younger people also being taken along for this ideology um, i'm actually even more disturbed by what maybe what i think i've seen happening is that almost that homophobia is becoming a little more accepted again like because oh, it it's a it's a package has. deal with the transphobia. It is. it is, and and they're both equated with with uh, being a a sexual predator. Right. The grooming uh, thing was a phenomenal success, uh, and it was so yeah, yeah that's true. Disingenuous. I mean, it's obviously bullshit. But even the guy who fucking Chris Rufo was like, "Yeah, remember, remember to call them groomers, so then we'll win yeah. at this." Like it was no, it's just big dead nonsense. Cynical. It's bigoted nonsense, and I hope it's just a final desperate kind of, you know, zealous attack before the cult culture just just moves on, um, and these things are viewed as, 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 as acceptable and a normal part of the human condition. Uh, I, I don't know if that will be the case. Also, Christians, sometimes they whine that the gays stole the rainbow because... I believe after Noah's Ark, there was a rainbow, and God was like, I'll probably never drown you again. Just fucking buy the rainbow stuff and be like, I'm taking it back for Jesus, you know? Like, rainbows are what? nice. Like, just leave the rainbows alone. <laughs> what an odd... Buy them and take them back for Jesus? <laughs> I mean, if you're that, like, worried about them being a gay thing, I don't know. It's super weird. Uh... Well, hey, I don't. This is an incredibly I think, minor point compared to. We talked to it. about no, I obviously, just really like colors, and the idea that these sad beige fuckers are gonna let <laughs> like sad. colors be taken from them is actually really funny. So enjoy your beige. Go beige and die. You got that out of your system now? Uh, yeah, no, 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 <laughs> yeah, a little bit. That's the point of the podcast. So. <laughs> getting yeah, out of your I, um, system with Corey and Lucy. Yeah, yeah, get it, get, get it out of your system. Mm -hmm. That could be so many things. That could be like a health podcast. That could be <laughs> where it's kind of a health, right? This is like a health for your for your soul, um, spiritual health. <laughs> but but I was just gonna say, and maybe we can move on to another topic. But I was just gonna say, on the issue of Christians reclaiming the rainbow, is, which is like a funny idea that you just brought to my mind. Um, and for go ahead, more power to you. But also, I love the idea of like. Because we've been talking about how all these phenomena are intermingled and how there's a heavy religious Christian bend to the revival of transphobia and homophobia. But there's no necessary connection there. there obviously, yeah. there's plenty of Christians uh, who who are right on this issue and, and, and perhaps because of their underlying Christian uh, views in some way. And so uh, that's that's not strange at all. Um, and, and, and so I like the idea, you know, of, of people who are right 
<laughs> on 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 trans and gay people, but also Christian, like reclaiming the flag and like a you know for both, like. Yeah, there you go. I mean, yeah, like I'm not religious. I'm not really. I'm or not the of, flag, but the rainbow. Sorry. I'm kind of against religion, but I have a soft spot for the, say, the Sermon on the Mount type of Christians. Some of the ones that really, they're focusing on like all the best shit that Jesus ostensibly said, and kind of ignoring the God drowned the world parts, things like that. that yeah, I mean. Bummer. Yeah, I think religion's a lot of bad too. Um, but it's some good. And for whatever reason, it's like a lot of things that would also otherwise be good. But, but for a lot of people historically get filtered through religion and kind of like like a lot of like a lot of mor- uh, morality um, and, and, and views about the world um, that would otherwise be fine. But then they're filtered through religion. And so you get you get those views anyway in culture. Um, and I don't know if we always need religion to to like achieve that, um, no. to like, you know, avoid uh, you know, um, mass immorality or like nihilism. Uh, I mean, I don't think a lot do. of Christians we think we do. <laughs> well, no, absolutely. I mean, yeah. that's, but that, that's, a, that's, how the do question. you know killing is wrong? Um, you don't believe in God. Like if you don't know, I don't know if I can explain it to you. Well, I know. Well, I certainly agree intellectually on all that. I think, in fact, I think like a lot of the claims about like religion and God's authority are like kind of parasitic on like a good good morality and a good way of understanding morality that's a but i also wonder on a social level if why do we keep gravitating towards religion as ways of like articulating morality and our duties to others and like forms of community and i don't know why we keep doing that less so lately uh but uh still to a great degree uh and but that brings the down many of the downsides of religion perhaps so i hope we can do it without that i don't know this is kind of a tangent no, that's, I mean, that's a, that's a longer than an hour. Or... <laughs> yeah. um, I got it out of my system though. <laughs> Can you turn your mic down maybe a little bit? Um, just oh, because I'm noise? getting a lot of whooshy sounds. As a pretend audio expert, if you turn it down slightly, maybe it'll whoosh a little less. Shit, I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm doing. I hope no. it uh, doesn't make it hard to hear me. No, I can hear you. I just, um feedback things okay audio so. words pretend pretend expertise mm. Bounds. Input. all right i did it a little bit okay how's that that's, that's probably pretty good now i didn't have a segue anyway but now we've lost if we had a segue what were we gonna we can just well, keep this in and this will be the segue. It's with the real speaking, talk. Speaking of segues, that's a funny you say. That's funny you say that. Bring up segues and say that word segue. But segues really didn't take off the way uh, people thought they would. It's true. <laughs> no, we're not talking about segues. Okay. It took me like like no, because I was not at all thinking of the you know transportation device. That's what you're talking about. It took me <laughs> yes. a second to realize that's what you meant when they took off, and I was like. What do you mean Segway has haven't taken off like that? The word, the idea of a, of like segways and conversation hasn't because that's a common idea. God, are we gonna keep this in the fucking podcast? Uh, it's up to the editor. Yeah, Only God uh, can God and the editor can the, the editor. Who's the editor? Is it Chris? Uh no. it's Zach. But don't tell because I don't think I know. No, I don't know. Is. I don't wanna Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell. Yes, exactly. It's the exactly. very same. That show exactly. was terrible. Um, exactly. Oh my God! What else were we going to talk about? Um, did you have a list? Um, we can talk about. One would think I had one. Not time. knowing what to talk about. This is pretty pretty good podcast so far. What do you think, audience? Woo! I hear um, them. We're so to happy. Our topic list. I mean, I saw other stuff. So, like, this is what I saw. Oh, we're already at forty-five minutes. So we just need a few more minutes. Or we could talk for an hour. Maybe the anti-power hours. No one can stop us. Anti-power hours. Yeah. Just hour after hour. Day. Make a rap month, theme song about it. Month long podcast. Uh-huh. Was there was there no other topics? <laughs> it all seems connected to like it's not like I'm tired of talking about this, but I also feel almost like no, you should talk about something else or something you want to talk about. No, like every, like all these conversations in general of late, even with people who are not terrible, 
come back to like trans people as if as if we oh. need to like decide something about them and it drives me crazy because like yeah yeah it's like like there's nothing like yeah it's interesting to me i don't even fully understand everything about that and the secret is i don't need to you know no it's, i mean I, don't, I really don't but just like i, I don't still know trans people do <laughs> It just like it doesn't. We're not figuring something out, and people always act like, "Well, okay, we well, gotta settle this," you know. And let's it's... figure. Let's fucking figure something out right fucking here, <laughs> right fucking now. Let's figure it out, audience. What should we figure out? Let's figure it out. Yeah. Um. We could talk about. Well, we don't talk about everything depressing. Honestly, we should keep this for the audience because it's so transparent. I bet. It, I, I feel like I would enjoy it. I heard my podcasters be this open about their, like, should like why do we always talk about such negative shit? Well, again, it's very, very we're relatable. That's rant, very relatable. Ranting. We can let's talk about like uh, pop culture. You know, like why? Well, a sort of segue between those, I guess, is I saw a thing about how segues you and segues. oh my god, stop Lucy and segue. <laughs> but the the dude from Tool, who I guess used to do this was wearing drag in florida recently um oh yeah deliberately to protest and technically it might be illegal which is batshit insane crazy crazy and i've seen some other stuff lately including in reference to taylor swift um who is some people call sort of a a fake advocate for lgbt people and stuff because she's she's not she doesn't speak out that often but like whether famous people have some obligation to speak out and i would say no but drag in particular not even trans people just drag is a show you know it's a it's it's usually like a like a performance thing it's almost more relevant to a musician and like a, a performer than a lot of political things so i actually think it is kind of lame that a lot of famous people aren't doing this because i think that's actually something they could probably do uh, yeah, I I don't think they're under any obligation necessarily more than any other person, but no. Um, although I do think you know it's great to use your platform. Like if you have a platform, seems seems good to use that for something. Um, you have a voice. Uh, yeah. Um, it's funny. I I mean, because a lot of times you know people's art speaks for itself too. Like, yeah. I was just I went to a concert a couple months ago here in Florida. Um. And it was over by a casino. Mm-hmm. And um, it was Joan Jett. Now, I'm a big fan of Joan Jett. Um, I love Joan Jett. But, you know, more of an older generation likes Joan Jett. We were by far the youngest people there. Everyone there was <laughs> twice our age, you know. Boomers. Um, and that's fine. Those kids I'm are missing out, go, though. When I go to concerts for older singers. But um, anyway, long, you know, long story short, uh, for those who don't know, Joan has this great song. It's cover of an, of an older song someone else wrote, but she uh, has song and popularized it and it's called androgynous oh the replacements and... yes what it's a replacement song oh oh, oh yes the original the original series mm-hmm. yes oh i i only knew it knew through her really at first and still only listen to hers um sorry replacements but you've been replaced uh and um it's one of my absolute favorite songs of hers people don't know go look it up uh it's got beautiful lyrics um uh and and very much about gender nonconformity and stuff and clearly you know close to her in some way although she's always been um very quiet and personal and private about that stuff mm-hmm. uh but it kind of speaks through this song that she plays and i was like like uh, this is the second time i've seen her i was like so praying she would play the song she didn't play it the first time because she was opening for someone else who she almost always does this was just her and i was so glad that it was just her and she played some of her other songs besides just big hits she played androgynous and it was such a weird experience because there was hundreds of people there, but it felt like half, at least half of the crowd of Florida boomers quieted the fuck down. And like probably a combination of not necessarily knowing the song, but also a combination of like, because Joan was like, oh, I want to play this. The song is really personal to me. Um, and, and thanks for having me in here. And I thought it was very conscious that she played that song here in Florida. Um, and I was so moved by um hearing her play the song for what felt like a crowd that wasn't loving it and i felt like and kind of inescapably and it sucks because obviously she's been singing that song for 25 years mm-hmm. and only now does it is it you know certain like a, like a context contextualized in like these like modern like american political debates um and, and so i feel like sometimes art speaks for itself and uh 
you know, it's it's nice to see people doing that. Uh, I agree. Um, yeah, I like that's what I like from artists. I mean, again, they can do whatever they want, but that sort of statement is is the most powerful. Absolutely. Um, and absolutely, I, absolutely. I don't. We might have talked about this before, but I swear I have to link to the performance, the YouTube video with Joan Jett, Laura Jane Grace, and Miley Cyrus Miley, sing, yeah, singing androgynous. androgynous. Oh man, I've I've watched that. That so cover much. is so good. It so is. Good. It is. And I kid you not, this is the this is a huge coincidence. We saw like a month after me and Kelly saw Joan, we saw Laura Jane Grace, just mm -hmm. her, not with against me, and um, it was such a small like intimate setting. She was on practically like kind of taking requests, like you could, people mm -hmm. were calling out songs. So I called out Androgynous, and and she and she sang Androgynous uh, for us, and it was it was very cool to just see just see her sing it uh, by herself, um, and because I knew she had sung it with Joan and Miley on those backyard session videos, which it's awesome. such a good it's such a fucking good video. Yeah, and, and and it's funny after Laura sang the song, she 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 spoke in the mic. She was like, "Damn, I wish I wrote that song because <laughs> <laughs> its lyrics are just so." so poetic um it's weird that that's a, i don't know a ton about the replacements though i really like some of their songs and i think of them as very like gen x dudes like them a lot of the time and they were like a sloppy drunk band that was always like fighting and breaking up and stuff so that song is interesting those lyrics but i always feel like People always talk well oh you know well sure kurt cobain like wore a skirt sometimes and that was cool but he didn't pretend to be a woman so bleh. like like I, I i know a lot of people who and i've encountered a lot of people who try to pull that sort of like they try to pull that di they, they try to differentiate it in that rhetorical way and then they don't ever talk about how trans children are, are getting oppressed by the state now it's crept into adults and all, it was already like you had to wait years and basically beg, you know, a doctor and jump through hoops. And then it's, it's gone to drag too. So you yeah. are pretending that you see a difference, but the state is seeing less and less of a difference. And the really reactionary people that you're pretending you're not, they're lumping it all together. Um, yeah. And the very last thing maybe they'll start thinking is suspect is like, a, like a, a hetero man cross-dressing with like a great wink because it's a big joke but you know maybe they'll get to mrs yeah. doubtfire eventually well, or something right like yeah that. i mean there's long trish and comedy of that and and it's uh and that's mysteriously not drag and it's not threatening no but yeah like, it's, it's i mean it's completely absurd like these levels of like theoretical differentiation between different uh gradients of gender nonconformity, and well some are okay some aren't and like you said it doesn't matter what the state is just going to see it the way the state sees it and uh so i mean uh, we're borderline back on like you you're wearing the wrong people used to get cited and jailed for wearing the wrong clothing yeah. like the wrong gender clothing yeah and people like michael knowles want that to come back and yeah. they never say okay no more like full-on early duggers no pants for women but they're basically saying that by saying that yeah. so we're about there in their minds yes. and that and and is insane not, if they're not saying that or if they don't if they, or even if they genuinely don't mean that, uh, what it doesn't matter much when you've thrown your lot in with the political movement as it as it exists and and as it's going to be used um, to guide certain state policies. Like it doesn't your intentions and your fine tuned you know nuanced opinions apparently on the matter aren't even going to matter that much um, mm -hmm. when it when it comes to the state like enforcing gender roles. I, it's an unwieldy uh, beast. Uh, crazy crazy to think that. And it, there's making just, these fine tuned distinctions will matter in, in implementation. Like I saw more Michael Knowles shit from you know, like he was talking about talking about how he said transgenderism should be eradicated, and then when people accused him of like yeah. genocidal talk, he was like, "Oh no, I'm not," because all I want is for you know trans people to never be able to engage in public life. I'm not saying I'm going to kill them. It's just that they can't do anything. Oh, dress sure. in any way they want or do anything sure. in public yeah oh. no and and you get the same refrain with every every bigotry right uh, judaism should be eradicated well no i'm not saying just people should be like you know murdered on mass it's just that they can't be jewish in public oh no it's just that people can't 
themselves believe in Judaism or practice Judaism. And it's like, well, well, how do you uh, going to accomplish that? Yeah. Uh, and like, what's where's the line? Uh, and what do you do when people don't comply with the way you think the world should go and the way people should live their lives? Um, and it, so absurd, absurd refrain. It is genocidal. And there's all, always moderates, like supposed moderates. Like um, those moderates. I always, I, as a boomer man in spirit, I read too much about World War II. And I always think about the guy who ran Hungary at the time who like pioneered some anti-Semitic laws before the Nazis really got going. By the time the Nazis invaded Hungary and were, you know, exterminating people, he was like, wow, that's a little excessive, you know, like there's a terribleness where you can be like, oh, I would never go that far. (laughs) And you're still part of the problem quite a bit. Well, I think that's really true. And it's really true with. It doesn't mean that you're consciously, I am a Nazi and I want to eradicate X, Y, Z, but you may well be helping. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I mean, genocide is not a single act. It is a mass process that undertaking involving hundreds, thousands of people on both sides of the genocide uh, over the course of, of days, months, years. So, you know, and this and this the, there's, you know, this historical debate between, um, you know, on on how the Holocaust progressed in terms of functionalism and intent and and the knowledge of each individual piece of the bureaucracy and uh, of the of what was happening overall, uh, you know, uh, so, so sure, plenty of people uh, would have had the same refrain as, as that person as, well, you know, I didn't mean to go that far or I wouldn't, you know, and it's like, you're part of a system, you're part of the system that is, that is, that is enacting genocide. Like, you're probably not going to know all the details of what's going on at the time that it's going on. And your nuances, like, they're going to stop listening to your, you know, reasonable, <laughs> moderate viewpoint at some point. And yeah. obviously the Holocaust started with excluding people, specifically Jews, from public life. And then yeah. it squeezed yeah. them more and more, encouraged them to leave when they could. And yeah. then the ones that didn't or couldn't, we know like what happened. It was, you know, yeah. it was just a tightening noose and stuff. And it started, yeah, you know, banning Jews from having bicycles and working certain jobs. Like professors in universities, I believe, you know, a teacher. Yeah. That's a little too close to to home i think oh yeah yeah and in fact i just saw who's the fucking scumbag i don't remember uh it's a jesse kelly Mm, how much time do you have oh man so many scumbags um right-wing radio guy like fully saying a dictator oh yeah. america needs a dictator and It was one of those one of those things they do where it's like we need a dictator. I'm not saying I want one, but we need one, and we're gonna get one. And then someone yeah. fully responding, "Where more solutions? Solutions? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Where more problems like lead to where more solutions?" Yeah. And uh, yeah, and he yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. "Yes, exactly." I'm like, "You know, do you you know what? Like, okay, fine. Liberals you, re, you know use Nazi too much, but that's like fucking Nazi talk. Like that's full no, on yeah, Nazi yeah. apologetics." There's an overreaction in the other direction of where thoughtful people do end up uh, being too uh, restrained with what and what are accurate descriptions of other people's ideologies. And it is frightening the extent to which stuff like that seems to be creeping more into public discourse as like a permissible and like legitimate perspective amongst many. And and, and that's the, the problem, too, with like people like the decrying decrying corporate pride is often, um, especially from the right wing a way of just decrying gay people in public life. I mean, it's taking the particular like manifestation of like a a shirt, a target with pride on it. But what you mean is, is the exclusion of public life issue that you were saying. And that is the start of a lot of bad things. Uh, Yeah. We got back to just negative. Let's go back to like, um, Joan Jett or like fun. (laughs) Uh, man, I just, People, I just, I'm subtweeting a lot of people right now who think they're being moderate about this kind of thing. Because I think a lot of liberals, again, they talk about everyone who's doing bad shit as if they're self-aware. I know people who don't think they're helping far-right people with their nuanced opinions. You know, they really don't think they are. Yeah. Yeah. But... Yeah, and, and you know, in, but in a, in a way, you have I got to you know to be I think 
to I think to be to be nuanced, you have a on the problem on the other side too of like uh, uh, of 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 people on the radical left who um, perhaps are, are way too willing to play the game of the right wing extremists on their own terms in terms of uh, violence mm-hmm. um, uh, and things like that, and that and those things can end up also reinforcing the power of the right without intending to. Um, so it's almost like I feel like there's pitfalls from the radicals and the centrists both in like have different ways where they, you know, in a certain contexts might end up uh, 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 empowering the very thing they're, they're not trying to. Uh, or, I mean, I, I don't like that um, Antifa for a lot of sort of mainstream people turned into as like a shorthand for being against Nazis, you know, or like. Oh, my yeah. uncle storming Normandy Beach was Antifa. I'm like, that's not all was, the that's... same thing. Antifa yeah. and Nazis are not morally equal, but Antifa generalizing are very against free speech for Nazis. They're not devoted to an abstract, pure principle of free speech, I would say. And I disagree with them on that, even as they're not, you know, I'll take them over Nazis. Like they're not more. Yeah, equivocation is silly on those. It's really silly kind of centrism. Um, and I think there are problems with Antifa. And I think it's silly to when pro Antifa equivocates with like, right, storming Normandy. That's, uh, I, I guess I get the point they're making. Like I get right? what they're trying to do, but but, I just... uh, but um, <laughs> and and I but I, and I think there's nuances over free speech. I mean, free speech as a as a legal rule, free speech as like a kind of a norm. Um, there's all these all these kind of levels and gradients too. Like, um, uh, so and and we're probably not going to settle all that right now, but. Yeah, I mean, that's a huge thing that people keep kind of switching on that. Like, of late, it's been more mainstream Democrats and liberals who are correctly pointing out to conservatives that the First Amendment is supposed to be about the government not being able to control, not, you know, YouTube being particularly strict about X topic. Um yeah. But when it's convenient, they'll probably switch sides on that rhetorical point. You know? Yeah, yeah. And it, cause, and it still matters, even though if something's not a first amendment issue, it still matters. But um, at the same why, time... Uh, why does... Like, the, the, you know, the, the, the debate example, we don't want to debate, you know, the trans issue. <gasps> They're not... You know, they don't want the norms of open debate. They're... It's like, well, everyone has a taboo. And everyone recognizes yeah, it's not a the line. Same. They're putting it somewhere yeah. else. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. But but we probably I think we're I think we're talking sort of work. I think we kind of got to this conclusion earlier. It's just we're just it's just we're on this constant Sisyphusian roller coaster of like arguing about free speech and then like realizing oh and then like arguing about free speech and then. Well, I mean, yeah, like I do worry that there is not like I, I don't think mean it... I don't mean culture. I just mean me and you like <laughs> locked in eternity in this podcast of like talking about. I mean, I miss my air conditioning, um, but beyond that, you know, I could do worse for eternity in terms of like, really. So I, I, I need the AC for eternity. Yeah. Well, are we in hell? Or are we? Because are AC we, are would we? be helpful. Hell. Do they have AC in hell? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they gotta. They gotta. Oh, you know what? They would for like my mom, because some people hate air conditioning. Like she gets cold really easily. Oh. So her hell would have air conditioning. Oh. Mine would not. <laughs> Oh, I see. It's like heaven. I mean, everyone has their own personal hell. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> and mine is um, talking about the transgender question forever. But again, I just... Like, I hate talking about it all the time, but I also can't stop, but I mean it in a good way. <laughs> well, like I said before, I mean, yeah, treating it like an open <laughs> question is, is, is awful, and then at some point, it's along some margins, you have to combat the the evil, the open evil and bigotry. So it's a difficult uh, line to walk. Sometimes I wonder if, like, what what the hell are their names? The guys, like, uh, <laughs> damn it, the whole like the guys. the the, the um, psychological underpinnings of political viewpoints. So like, conservatives have a higher oh, like disgust, Jonathan. yeah, thank you, uh, type thing. And then I start thinking, oh no, maybe the poor right wing people can't help it. Like it's like, but they can though. Oh yeah, they definitely they definitely can. Like I I hate to just pat myself on the back, but like the first trans person I met 
and they I I met them before they were dressed um and like it didn't like five minutes later I didn't care and like two minutes later like it's it's really easy for me and arguably I should be more sympathetic question mark or something towards people who like are having problems but like can they help it like were they no, born I... this way <laughs> <laughs> no 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 I think it's easy to think like I mean no like it becomes more obvious as more uh, as we get farther in time from more things being moral controversies and then they become more normal. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I think right wing people are in no way determined by the universe to <laughs> be horrible towards trans people, perfectly in their power and capacity and, and ability. But people become animated by hatreds and, and narratives. And uh, it's unfortunate. Yeah. I just the way people fall from moral panics. I mean, everybody on, on all sides, but just very yeah. cult, like very easy to fool. It's yeah, I don't, I don't think people are nearly panicked enough about the pervasiveness of moral panics. Um, that is true. It's, it's really, uh, they're going after your kids. They're getting your kids morally panicked. They're, uh, they're, they're doing shows where they dress up as morally panicked individuals. That is we so need, true, need though. To get rid of this problem plaguing society that is true <clears throat> i just seems uh, like a, this seems like a good note to to end on the end god damn it's hot in here but what's not depressing though what is i mean we touched on uh you know music and stuff what not depressing that's an yeah. interesting i don't know it's an interesting idea not depressing <laughs> hmm. uh i recently went to ontario and picked up a lot of rocks from the beach and looked at them. You went and to then, Ontario. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Like Gary. And then I went in the water and it was brisk. So that was good. <laughs> yeah, I've never been up there. It's that's that sounds fun. Rocks are fun. Yeah. No, I like rocks. I love rocks. <laughs> what have what is non depressing? Uh in your in Florida. What's in Oh life uh, in well I'm going to another concert tomorrow. Uh, this one is Stevie Nicks. So again, mm -hmm. ready to be on the younger side. But Stevie Nicks <laughs> um, of Fleetwood Mac mm -hmm. and also a, a successful solo career as well. Big fan of Fleetwood Mac and Stevie Nicks. So excited to do that. I'm going with my wife and also my her mom, my mother-in-law, and her, one of her sisters. Are you bringing um, so any of your cats? Should be fun. Uh, all four cats always come with us everywhere we go. Concert. It's like a huge bag. Restaurant. No, our pockets. Like. Oh, okay. Yeah, because a lot of times I wear cargo shorts, so I, I have different pockets like right and le like for my four four cats. So now I, you're um, just bragging because, as you may know, women aren't allowed to have pockets. Generally that's, speaking, that's that's true. Yeah. Women aren't allowed to have pockets, but this, this is the society we live in, so I won't quibble with. It's uh, a big purse conspiracy, I think. Yeah, well, you yeah, you can probably fit a lot of cats in your purse. You're trying, but still, I don't think I've, I've ever seen you thing. have a purse. You know, I don't know if you're much of a purse. Uh, you've seen me in a lot of business casual settings, so I yes. probably had like a big shoulder yes. bag. Maybe you're always know. very business and very casual. <laughs> uh, when that's what they call me, that's yeah. what I'm known as. <laughs> um, well, that's good. I love it. Yeah, I'm trying to think how many concerts I've even seen yeah. since the plague diminished. Be fun. And I guess my question is, will I be able to avoid COVID? when I go see Taylor Swift in a few weeks. Oh. Because oh. that is going to be by far the You've biggest been... concert I have ever been to. And that's yeah, probably that's going cool. to be very silly. That's cool. And very have fun with that. Top. That's a lot of fun. Tough avoiding COVID. We've been pretty lucky so far. Hopefully lucky tomorrow. I really hope Stevie Nicks is dressed in drag. You know, like you're like the protest. Like pants. Just pants. I hope, I hope Stevie Nicks is wearing so many pockets. <laughs> I that would be drag if your pants have a bunch of pockets. pockets. That's undeniably drag. Magician style. Yeah. I'm just going to wear like seven neckties, except it's really hot. Yes. Yeah, so please, please wear the New Hope. Tie. If you uh, can get a tie for every Star Wars movie, you can wear all of them at once. You could have. I still have it right here. There it is. In case I need there it. There it is. The famous A New Hope tie. I really need to make my father rewatch that movie. I'm hopeful that um, he has a newfound appreciation. He needs to for learn. It. Is your dad not like Star Wars or 
he, movies or life or the rule about him is that if he if he likes a movie it's good if he doesn't like it that has no bearing on whether it's i will like it's good you know he like right. i want to watch another movie about world war ii because i'm a boomer man and i'm like great i will also watch a movie about world war ii but also star wars and bro star wars is about world war ii just <laughs> tell him that I it's, mean, about, it's about vietnam though really. yeah but the uh, the empire clearly uh aesthetically inspired by the nazis uh a little more you know. subtle i mean besides the stormtrooper thing in um yeah, just tell him this is this is a movie this is a documentary about an <laughs> un discussed under discussed war in world war ii i mean uh i mean it, jedi with the whole uh jedi's uh, vietnam because endor yeah yeah that, so build your dad up to that. I will do my best. See, the Ewoks are underrated, though. See, I am mostly okay with Ewoks. I think they could have made it... Like, There's a couple of scenes where they're, like, smashing uh, ATST armor with, like, two logs. And I'm like, maybe, maybe like, dial down the power of logs. No, it's all... I, a, well, the power of logs, you really underrate the power of logs, especially with momentum really yeah. is doing most of the work there i think you so this, yeah, is, we why we, this is why we why we we got crushed in vietnam lucy uh because of people like you who underrated the power <laughs> of decentralized uh warfare and and guerrilla warfare and logs i'm sure um, i mean <laughs> it was like i need more cute teddy bear like merchandise but having sort of the Viet Cong sort of be like fierce teddy bears that's kind of great, actually, if you put it... If it came out now, people would be like, wow, this is <laughs> this is Citizen Kane. Um, and a really underrated thing is if you go... If anyone has Disney Plus or if they're, you know, pirating uh, Disney Plus or anything, they have a uh, the Ewoks cartoon from the mid-'80s. Now, have I've... you ever seen this? It's quite a gem. It has... It, one of the writers on the Ewoks cartoon is Paul Dini of famed Batman the Animated Series and Harley Quinn co-creator... So good. Aim, the phrase that strangely, but uh, the Ewoks cartoon is terrible, but it's, it's <laughs> That's really what enjoyable. Yeah. Just in for like a few minutes, um, the animation's really cute. Um, Aren't there live action specials? And does one yeah. of them contain Wilfred Brimley for some reason? I haven't seen the, the live action Ewok <laughs> movies yet. Yet, wait yeah. for a theater release, hoping to see them on the big screen. <laughs> there is still time. There is, there is, but not for us. Oh no! Was that a, was that you attempting to wrap this up? You're never leaving, Sisyphus. We're no hell. Oh shit! All right, well let's start the podcast over. For we Sisyphus. ate all twelve pomegranate seeds. We're gonna stay in the underworld. It's gonna be winter forever. I'm tr- I'm just adding the only myth that I can think of. Uh, the, the pomegranate uh, Persephone. What the fuck's her name? Kidnap I'm not a, oh, you know, whatever. It's fine. I figured you a had myth. a professorial beard, so you know every myth ever made. Professorial beard. You had a professorial beard. Professorial beard. Beard. I'm yeah. familiar with um, some myths, but mm-hmm. they're often about people in spandex and for little children. Um, Those are usually better. I feel like we haven't discussed. Have we discussed Star, uh, Superman enough? Because we Starman. discussed Batman. And I feel like someday we'll have to really delve into Superman more. I don't really have many thoughts on those topics. Really? Um, Is that true? So that's unfortunate that. You yeah, you never. You, you have no thoughts about Superman. I have a Superman shirt. Right now, outstanding. Outstanding. I'm 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 excited. They're they're ta- they're saying that Crypto will be in the new Superman movie. Uh, which makes sense because James Gunn likes his little cute animal characters. I know at some point Batman has also had a dog. I, it took me a long time to realize that they yes. m- comics they really milk just every familial bond possible. That oh, dog, yes. that niece, super yeah. second. Well, it's cousin. not Bat Dog, although I'm sure those other characters you mentioned exist. But it's Ace the Bat Hound. Oh, okay. uh, please know your myth. Please know your myths. It's Sorry Ace the Bat Hound. <laughs> And 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 there's a great episode of Batman Beyond where um, where Bruce is very old in that show. You know, mm-hmm. he has like a new I remember the show a little bit. Yeah. And they have a beautiful episode in that one where it's like an origin story for they have Ace in that world. And it's mm-hmm. more grounded because he's like a, a guard dog for, for an old man. 
Sure. Um, but he found a, um, like, in an alleyway. And this is a really cute episode. <laughs> an alleyway. I'm... Batman needs to stay out of alleyways. Yeah, well, no, he found Ace, though, so it's kind of a, you know, you never know what you're going to find if you go in an alleyway. That's the major theme behind the oh, Batman. Batman. <laughs> That's really true. That's a good point. You, just, you don't know about those alleys. I was just reading somewhere how New York doesn't have that many alleyways, but, like, Batman needs to pretend that Goth, like... <laughs> What do you mean just... New York doesn't have that many alleyways? What's, what the fuck is an alleyway? If, if I don't York... know! What studies are you reading? <laughs> what, are, what are these... I have no idea. What are these conspiracies that you're being drawn into? <laughs> these cults that uh... don't think New York has alleyways? <laughs> oh my god, it's so warm in here. How do you live in Florida? What's the temperature right now? Where you are? Uh, I don't know what that'll tell me. Um, my entire I feel I'm so red right now. It's terrible. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> Northern <laughs> climate. I hate the heat almost as much as I hate well, Ron DeSantis. So, well, the Miami Heat. Uh, the, the baseball. That's a, or, that's, oh that's a sports right basketball team. <laughs> I am not acquainted with them. They could be lovely gentlemen. I'm not, I'm not a basketball person. I don't know. I don't remember if you were a sports. You only like wrestling, right? Is that the rule? Yeah, and that's not really a sport. Like a, <gasps> How like dare you sport. admit? You're not allowed to admit that, I thought. I thought you were I used to, to be more into real sports a little bit, but they're not as entertaining as wrestling. So. No, sports are the worst. We should ban them. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Not really, though, guys. No, not really, guys. That would be a terrible note to go out on. Yeah. Um, well, uh, wow. look out for episode four or... of non-servium Lucian <laughs> Corey's anti-power hour. Um, absolutely. Oh, my God. What happened to my... Where is my mind? Um, yeah, maybe... we're, going, we're a little more than an hour. We don't want to falsely advertise our show or have to change the name i'm telling you anti-power hours just like 10 hour hours non the insanity will grow oh we'll do that we'll we'll do like a whenever we see each other next we'll do like a live podcast that's true it's like forever for all we, day yeah i we should do that um well the next time perhaps this will not devolve into madness but it probably will um like all our podcasts evolve into madness where should the people find you oh like, y'all you guys know where you me know on twitter and you google my name look up various articles um i'm gonna be uh host, uh interviewing jason lee bias for c4ss's mutual exchange radio next month so look out for that i'm sure listeners of us would enjoy that too uh, I am a I'm an advocate for Jason Lee Bias. I'm a Jason Lee Bias libertarian in many ways. Though the last time I saw him, he he was sar- sardonically chanting Trump throughout the weekend. Little did he know what would happen. He's um, pretty sardonic. Yeah, it's not. It wasn't. He didn't know. We we didn't. Know. I'm not a Jason Lee Bias advocate. I'm a, I'm a <gasps> Jason Lee Bias um, opponent. Opponent. Um, that's what the podcast will be about when I interview him. I'm going to ask him about why he's um, so tall. I don't know. He, he's so tall. tall. Right? Isn't he tall? Uh, I don't really think. I don't know how tall Jason is. I'll, that's what I'll, I'll make sure to get to the these and other important questions on the podcast, though. Okay. Maybe next time it'll be less hot. Um, you can find me on the I internet. I hope so, for your sake. Oh, my God. What happened here? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Lucy Stag. But... Yeah. Okay. Goodbye. (laughs) Forever. No, not forever. See you guys next month. Thanks for listening. Oh my god. Yeah, that's what I meant. And, um, et cetera. Et cetera. Goodbye now.